So, of course, we have uh, friends in the estate, and there's uh, a couple of companies here that are just so supportive and helpful. As we've said, Canterbury Automotives is one of them, and the other one is a company called Biotech that do um, PC repairs and data destruction and recycling, that sort of stuff. Um, but it's a bit of a mystery to me where they get all this stuff from and how they kind of come across it. But they, they came in last night and said, Rob, do you want a couple of phone batteries? I said, sure, why not? I can always use the chemicals. I said, brilliant. Then they ran off and ran back in with a couple of boxes of batteries. There's a thousand of them. They brought me a thousand phone batteries, which is just incredible. They're all Samsung's production date, 2016, 2017. Some of them are blown, but most of them are in beautiful condition. They've got that kind of hard chocolate bar feel to them. Now, these things are more or less the same as an 18650. They have a little circuit in here that gives them protection, which is what differentiates them from the 18650, but you just don't need it. So we're going to take that protection circuit off and take it back to its basic battery, which will make it identical in the way that you handle it and the way that you test it as an 18650. Now, reusing old 18650s from laptops became a thing a few years ago because you could get them for nothing. Now you can't get them from nothing because everybody understands that these batteries, when they're apparently dead for electronics use, actually have about 80% left in them. It's a little bit like buying a cake, taking a bite and saying, no, I can't eat any more of that because it's got a bite out of it. And you throw it away. These things have got tons and tons of storage left in them. They lose about 20% of their storage uh, for every 500 cycles, more or less. 500 cycles is around about 18 months, two years, something like that. So they have probably 80% left in them and a good four or five years of use left in them with significant uh, energy storage capability. Now you can buy these second hand actually, and I looked on eBay about them, they're about three pounds each. So they're about 3,000 pounds worth of batteries. So well worth the trouble for me to actually go through these. As they're not as popular as 18650s. They're not the thing that people automatically think, oh yeah, I can sell that second hand. If you go down to a phone repair shop, which is probably where these came from, and just ask them. If you remember when flash cameras were really important and everybody was doing flash camera projects because of the capacitor in the flash camera, you could go to a, a, a photo store and say, can I have your old flash cameras? And they just give them to you because they only have to throw them away. I think it's probably the same things with this. You go to a phone repair store and say, you got any old phone batteries? They're probably just going to give them to you because they would otherwise have to dispose of them. I mean, if there's any broken ones, you then have to dispose of them. But uh, what I plan on doing is I'm taking them to a different camera store and saying, here, I want to dispose of these. And they will take them in for proper disposal. Our local supermarket actually has a disposal uh, case for these batteries where you can slot the batteries in and they're properly disposed of. So any that fail the test we're about to do, we uh, have to dispose of properly, but there's plenty of ways of disposing of those that are available at the moment. So first things first, take that into an 18650. Let me give you a close up of it. So if you notice here on the battery, it's a nice square block. We've got the printed side there, we've got a silvery side there, and then there is a bit of tape right there. That holds on a plastic cap. If I just slice carefully down that tape, you don't need to press particularly hard, you just enough to get through the tape and it is really thin, and fold back that plastic cap. There we go. You see that bit of metal there? And that bit of metal there? That is the battery tab. This plastic cap here, there we go, just there, that is the protection circuit. So these are always added to phone batteries and laptop batteries, all those kind of things, where you need a little bit more protection over the battery. But the battery connection tabs themselves are right there and right there. And what we need to do is just remove this piece of plastic, which is in fact the protection circuit. And then we can connect quite easily to this much larger tab. As you can see on the battery itself, the connection of the battery is right there. It's these two little copper wires. They're actually quite hard to connect to, but we don't need to, we just need to run either a fingernail or a knife blade down that little bit of um, tape, peel it back and we get our battery connections right there and right there. We have the battery tabs exposed right there. This is uh, quite a hot soldering iron actually. Remember it's supposed to be 360 degrees, so it's quite a hot soldering iron. A 
There we go. There's one. There we go. There's the other. So now we've desoldered the tabs. That is identical to an 18650. So once we've got the protection circuit off and it's just got those tabs sticking out, we can put that onto the meter and check the voltage. And there we go, 3.7 volts on that. So that's actually in really good condition. So I put a G on it. Anything around about three volts or so, up to 3.7 volts is in excellent condition. So this is awesome actually. I mean, what a gold mine. So out of the 10 that I've just done, Eight of them had four or more volts on them, and two of them had 3.7 volts on them. Now, you've got to think about this for a second. These were charged in a phone and were taken out about two years ago and left lying around. So if they've got four volts on them, the self-discharge of these ones is incredibly low. So these ones are going to be in really, really good condition. If it's around about four volts, you've got a really good battery. If it's around about 3.7 volts, you've got a battery that's well worth the trouble. 2.5 volts and above, you can actually recondition them. Now, normally when you charge these, what you do is something called constant current. So you leave the voltage open and you stick on these ones 500 milliamps in it as the charge amps. And you'll see the voltage going up. When the voltage goes up to 4.4, it's charged, you take it off. Now, you can do that with just a benchtop supply. You don't need anything special to do that. We've got quite a lot, obviously, and we don't want to be standing over them, so we're going to make something to do that, and that'll be in a future video. At the moment, we're just testing the batteries we've got. But you can, if you've got one battery, or two or three, just do it on a benchtop supply like that, and stand and watch it, and you'll see when it's charged. Now, the ones at 2.5 volts and above are recoverable. They've been standing for a bit long. So maybe they've been in a phone, maybe they were charged, taken down to discharge, left in the phone, and there's been a trickle discharge. They've dropped below the 3.7 volt region. Now, when they do that, you can bring them back by charging them at 100 to 200 milliamps. So same trick, leave the voltage open, pump in about 100 to 200 milliamps, and it's much slower but you should be able to bring them back. Anywhere lower than about sort of two volts or so, then they're, they're done for, okay? Because the lithium in there actually acts like pillars. And if you've removed too many pillars, basically the floor's collapsed and the building's useless. It's a lot to actually repair it. But as long as enough lithium in there to hold that floor up, you can squeeze the lithium in to get it back. So 2.5 volts, 100 or 200 milliamp charge, uh, volt, uh, charge current, and you're going to be able to recover them. 3 volts, 3.7 volts, you've got a good battery. So we're going to go through all of these and check that they will actually um, have a decent enough voltage on them. If they've got a decent enough voltage on them, then what we're going to do is we're going to charge them and then obviously discharge them to work out the capacity. Then we're going to charge them and leave them for two weeks, measure the voltage again to work out what the stability of them is. Once we've gone through those tests, we know we have an awful lot of nice batteries, but it's looking really good at the moment because we've got so many that are at the 4 volt level. So an awful lot of those batteries are going to be really good. Now it's going to be a, a bit of a project obviously because we've got a thousand of them to go through. Uh, and so it won't be like tomorrow when that video goes up. But the videos will go up steadily. Uh, and we'll be able to use those batteries to do various projects with. So talk about a stroke of luck and talk about what nice people to give us a whole bunch of these batteries that we can be using. I mean I've got something like... Uh, 10, 12 kilowatt hours of storage that I've just been given. But anyway, that's how you deal with them. So like I said, this video is about how to deal with these batteries. You deal with them in the same way you would as an 18650 once you've removed that protection circuit. You're looking for batteries that have got 3.7 volts or above, which are good batteries. Any batteries at 2.5 volts and above you can recover by using a low current charge regime. Any that are sort of 2 volts and less, they're basically ruined and you want to get rid of them. And you can use these in the same way that 18650s were used, but 18650s are getting harder to get hold of. These are still relatively easy to get hold of, but I imagine in a couple of years' time, they actually won't be. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions, please do put them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. I hope you enjoy the rest of the project, which will be an ongoing project. Thank you very much for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.